We're going to start on chapter eight because that's where we left off. And hopefully that I can make this big enough. There are several that didn't show, so we'll just have to bear with us. So one thing I would ask is probably you should mute all of your speakers unless you have, oops, unless you have a reason to raise your hand. That way, because I'm hearing a lot of background, a lot of moving and stuff, and we don't want to hear anything that you don't want us to hear as well. <coughs> So chapter eight, real estate brokerage. Now, I think I do this, it goes back to that, yeah. The NAR is gonna tell you that 76% of all the brokers in uh, that are licensed currently work in a, what we now call boutique brokerage, meaning that there are less than 10 people in the company. Technology has changed us in such a position that now no longer do we need the big office. This has been a big model change that you will see. Uh, when I first started, you know, you needed a big company so that they could um, have that fax machine, you know, and a second line for a fax machine. Uh, we needed, they used to mail us the listings and we would put it <coughs> in a three ring binder. Now with technology, we don't need any of that. So brokerages have changed over the last five years, 10 years. However, the laws have not. So we still work under what we call agency and the agency laws and the brokerage. So there is what we call license law. We are going to cover state license law um, in the third test. But right now we need to talk a little bit about license law and how it works. License law serves for three purposes. Um, they're on page 116 if you got your books. <coughs> The purpose of license law is to establish what it takes to get your license. Every state is controlled by their own real estate commission. Each commission establishes the requirements for getting a license law, it, or license. In Indiana, it used to be 54 hours. We've now changed it to 90 hours, which is what you guys are currently taking. That's why it's 90 hours. So the first purpose of license law is to establish the requirements to get a license. And that's what they have done. The second purpose is to define what activities require a license. So for example, in Indiana, buy, sell, trade, lease, exchange, manage, list, rent, consult, refer, or <clears throat> uh, yeah, refer, requires a license, all right? So you do any of those activities, buy, sell, trade, lease, exchange, manage, list, rent, you have to have a license. That's what Indiana says. Now, Nevada is different. They have a different license law, still defines what they have to do, but in Nevada, it says, if you wanna buy and sell, it's one license. You wanna manage property, it's a different license. So their license law is slightly different. The third thing license law does is it explains to us how we are supposed to treat each other. There are ethics classes and ethics requirements on how I treat you as a licensed person differently than I might treat my clients, all right? So there are rules and we will go over the NAR's ethical rules in which you can't do. <clears throat> and then the fourth thing license law does is it defines 
what they're going to do to you if you violate license law. All right. So everybody get that. Let me put that in there and see if that helps. Establish the requirements for license law. What activities need a license? How do you treat people that are licensed? And what are the violations if you violate license law? So those are the four purposes of what the law really does. In Indiana, we have a commission called the Real Estate Commission. All right. We will talk all in depth about the Real Estate Commission. Now, when it comes to a brokerage as a business, my brokerage, the Modulin Group, is like any other business in the world. It can be a franchise like Remax. It can be an individual company or unfranchised like the Modulin Group. It can be one store. It can be multiple locations. We have three offices that we deal with. We've got this one and then one in Franklin and one over on the west side. It can be a corporation or it can be a sole proprietor. So the brokerage itself is just like a business. It, everything that it works, works like a business. So Walmart and the Modulin Group, as far as the business is concerned, are the exact same thing. I still file business entity reports. I still file taxes. I still do uh, you know, HR stuff. The only difference is obviously Walmart has a couple more zeros at the end of their name or at the end of their accounting year than we have. But as far as a business goes, it's the same thing. Now, that business has a managing broker, which is me. Now, how many of you guys saw, <coughs> <laughs> Hold on. <coughs> Finding Nemo. In Finding Nemo, remember the pelicans? Mine? Mine? They were fighting over the fish? All right. So I teach this chapter, these next two chapters, like this, because I teach it over the top because I want you guys to see and learn this point. So from here on out, we're gonna play a game where you guys are actually working for me, okay? Because that's gonna make these stories a lot easier. So the relationship or the company has only one managing broker, me, all right? And as far as the state sees this, I, am the only agent there is. You all represent me. Therefore, all of the listings are mine. All of the clients are mine. All of the commission is mine. I will indeed share it with you but understand it's all mine, baby, all right? Understand it that way, which truly is the legal way, but think of the Pelicans, it's all mine. Everything's mine. And when we talk about that, when you come into my office tomorrow and you go, hey, I got a new client, it's my mom. No, you don't. I have a new client that's your mom and I'm going to allow you to work with her. Other than that, it's my client. The state sees it as mine. When we sign the listing, guess who signs it? Not you, me. When we get paid, guess whose name's on the paycheck? Not yours, mine. And brokers all the time go, well, I gotta give my boss half my money. No, actually, I'm gonna give you half of my money because it's my commission. All right, that's how the state sees it. There is one agent in every company, one called the managing broker. That is me. Everybody else 
works underneath of that broker. You are an uh, independent contractor of the managing broker. So the relationship that you and I have there on page 117 is that of an independent contractor. <clears throat> Cameron, are you still there? We lost your picture. Yeah, I'm still here. I just have you okay. muted. What? We've got one other person who is, it's, you guys see that? says waiting for name that i don't know who that is huh it's just all right so when you guys come to work for the modulin group you will sign what's called an independent contractor agreement this is the, what binds you to me as the managing broker so we're over here on page 118 now, according to the IRS, there are only three people named in the, in the tax statutes, and they are called a statutory non-employee. Statutory, S-T-A-T-U-R-T-O-R-Y, statutory non-employee. See if this works. I think my finger will work. Can you guys see that? Okay. No. 